Now that we have a way to lower the 120 volts AC from the wall receptacle to 12 volts using our 10 to 1 transformer, let's figure out something to do with it. One use that easily comes to mind is as a battery charger for a 12 volt automobile battery. Let's look at the schematic diagram of the 10 to 1 transformer with the 12 volt output connected to a discharged automobile battery. Knowing that current flows from positive to negative, according to Benjamin Franklin's concept of conventional current, we can predict what will happen in a circuit by looking at the schematic diagram. Remember, the transformer's output is alternating current. The transformer is strictly an AC device. It uses alternating current as an input on the primary and produces alternating current as an output on the secondary. So let's look at the circuit when point A is positive and point B is negative. The current flows from positive to negative. So in this case, it flows from the positive side of the transformer secondary into the positive terminal of the battery, giving it a little charge. The return path for the current is from the negative terminal of the battery to the negative side of the transformer's secondary winding. So far, so good. We've managed to give the battery a little shot of current to charge it. But let's see what happens when the polarity is reversed. When point A becomes negative, it will literally suck out any charge that was put into the battery. What we've made here is not a battery charger, but a bomb. The heat generated by the current rushing in and out of the battery will cause it to explode, sending acid everywhere. Let's try the same circuit again. But this time, we'll put a diode in series with the transformer and the battery. The anode of the diode is connected to the transformer secondary at point A and the cathode to the positive terminal of the battery. The negative terminal of the battery is connected to the transformer secondary at point B. Let's trace the flow of current when point A is positive and point B is negative. The current flows from the positive terminal of the transformer to the anode of the diode. Since the arrow of the diode symbol is pointing the same direction that the current is flowing, the current passes right through the diode to the positive terminal of the battery. The return pass for the current is through the negative terminal of the battery and back to point B, now the negative side of the transformer secondary. Again, so far so good, but let's see what happens when the transformer reverses polarity and point A becomes negative and point B becomes positive. The current wants to flow from point B of the transformer secondary winding through the battery and back to point A. But the diode is now pointing against the current flow and it will not allow the current to pass through itself. This breaks the return path for the current and stops the current from flowing anywhere in the circuit. Remember, we must have a complete path for current to flow in the circuit. It's a lot easier to understand how this circuit works if we look at a graph of the current that's flowing into the battery. When point A is positive, current flows through the diode and into the battery. But when point A is negative, the diode blocks the current, cutting off the negative half of the AC waveform. This is shown by the dotted line on the bottom or negative half of the AC waveform. Because we're only using one half of the AC, just the positive half, this type of power supply is known as a half wave power supply. By keeping the current flowing in one direction with the diode, we've changed alternating current into direct current. The output of this half wave power supply is a special kind of direct current called pulsating DC. It's not pure and constant like the DC or direct current from a battery but instead actually drops down to zero volts and stays there for a full half cycle or one one twentieth of a second. To take advantage of both the positive and negative halves of the alternating current, we can connect four diodes together in a circuit called a bridge rectifier. Let's connect the bridge rectifier to the transformer's secondary winding and the dead battery. The two cathodes are joined together at the positive output of the bridge rectifier. You'll see bridge rectifiers drawn in all kinds of different ways. The only surefire way to find the positive output of the bridge rectifier is to see where the two cathodes are tied together. 
The positive output of the bridge rectifier is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. The negative terminal of the bridge is grounded along with the negative terminal of the battery. The remaining two terminals of the bridge rectifier are connected to the secondary winding of the transformer. Let's trace the current flow when point A is positive and point B is negative. The current flows from point A to the junction of these two diodes. But which diode will conduct the current? Well, obviously, the diode on the left is pointed the wrong direction against the current flow. So in this case, the current will flow through the diode on the right and through to the battery, giving it a little charge, and through to ground. The return path is from ground and again to the junction of these two diodes. Well, seemingly both of these diodes are pointed the correct direction. But remember, current flows from positive to negative, not from positive to positive. So the current flow will take the direction of this diode and back to point B, which is now the negative side of the transformer. When the transformer's polarity is reversed and point B becomes positive, the current flows from point B to the junction of these two diodes. Well, here again, the diode on the left is pointed the wrong direction, so the current flows through the diode on the right. Well, notice where this diode is going. This diode is pointed to the same point as the first diode allowed the current to flow through. That is, in this case, the current flows straight through and back to the positive terminal of the battery. Instead of simply cutting the current flow off, this diode acts like a detour and allows the current to flow back into the battery, giving it another little charge. Again, the return path is from the negative side of the battery to ground and back through to these two diodes again. Remember that current flows from positive to negative, so this time the current will flow through this diode and back to point A, now the negative side of the transformer. By using four diodes connected together as a bridge rectifier, we can use both halves of the AC waveform and charge the battery twice as fast. This type of power supply is known as a full wave power supply. In fact, it's really known as a full wave bridge rectifier power supply because it uses both halves of the AC waveform and uses a bridge rectifier as well. Instead of simply cutting off the current when it's flowing the wrong direction, as we did with the half wave power supply, it's now rerouted by the bridge rectifier and flipped up to the positive side. Now the dead area between pulses of current is filled up with an additional pulse of current. Now this makes the full wave power supply much more efficient than a half wave supply of the same voltage. It's important to note that although the full wave power supply is more efficient than the half wave power supply, the output still drops to zero every half cycle. We simply have twice as many pulses as before. We find bridge rectifiers in the power supply unit of many games. This power supply from Williams Stargate has three on the printed circuit board. There's another way that we can make a full wave power supply using just two diodes. This time, we'll use our center tap transformer and the two diodes connected in a circuit like this. Almost without exception, the center tap of the transformer will be grounded. The remaining two secondary leads are connected to the anodes of the two diodes. As with the bridge rectifier, we can find the positive output of the power supply where the two cathodes are tied together. The positive output of the power supply is connected to the positive terminal of the discharged battery. The return path is through ground and back to the center tap of the transformer. Let's trace the current flow in this circuit. When point A is positive and point B is negative, the current flows through this diode and into the positive side of the battery. The return path is through ground and back into the center tap of the transformer. When the polarity of the transformer is reversed and point B becomes positive, the current flows through this diode. Well, notice that this diode is connected right back up to the positive side of the battery. Again, instead of simply cutting off the current because it's flowing the wrong way, this diode acts as a detour and brings the current flow back up into the battery. The return path, again, is through ground and back into the center tap. Well, this is a way that we can make a full wave power supply using two diodes. This type of power supply is called a full wave 
center tap power supply because it uses a center tap transformer and both halves of the AC waveform. Notice something unusual about the way this power supply operates. When point A was positive, the current flowed through this diode and into the battery. The return path was back through to the center tap of the transformer. We only have used one half of the transformer secondary. When point B becomes positive, the current flows through this diode and again back into the battery. The return path is through the center tap of the transformer again. This time we've only used this half of the transformer secondary. By using only one half of the transformer secondary at a time, the output voltage of the full wave center tap power supply will be one half of the voltage of the entire transformer secondary. So in this case, if we wanted to charge a 12 volt automobile battery, we would have to use a 24 volt center tapped transformer. A graph of the output of the full wave center tap power supply is the same as that of a full wave bridge rectifier power supply. It's pulsating DC with two pulses for every cycle of the alternating current. We commonly see both types of power supplies in electronic games, and there's no clear-cut advantage of one over the other. A designer may elect to use either type or maybe even both in his game. What do you suppose would happen if we reversed the direction of the two diodes in the full wave center tap power supply? Instead of having the two cathodes joined together, now we have the two anodes connected to each other. Well, do you remember what we said about the two anodes being connected together in the bridge rectifier? Remember, where the two anodes are tied together, we find the negative output of the power supply. By reversing the polarity of the two diodes, we've reversed the direction of the current flow in the circuit. By simply reversing the diodes, we've created a negative power supply. While the need for a negative power supply might not be immediately apparent to you, it will be as we look at other circuits later on in the course, especially when we look at asteroids. In the asteroid segment of the arcade school, you'll see how important those negative power supplies really are. Let's take our negative power supply and add two more diodes. Their anodes are connected to the transformer and the two cathodes are tied together. Remember, where the two cathodes are connected together, we find the positive output of the power supply. By connecting just two more diodes, we can make a power supply that's both positive and negative. It's called a split supply. Because it's the transformer that determines the voltage of the supply, the voltage of the positive half of the split supply is equal to the voltage of the negative half of the split supply. They have the same voltage, but opposite polarity. Split supplies are very popular in video games. There's certainly no sense in using a separate transformer for your positive and negative power supply when you can make both supplies by adding just two additional diodes. This is a schematic diagram of the same split supply, but drawn in a different way. Does this look a bit more familiar to you? It's a bridge rectifier. Remember, you'll see bridge rectifiers drawn all kinds of different ways. In this case, the two diodes on the right are responsible for the positive power supply, and the two on the left for the negative power supply. Here's your clue for identifying a split power supply. Anytime you see a bridge rectifier powered by a center tap transformer, you're looking at a split supply.